Welcome to an application problem involving a separable differential equation. Here we have a mixture problem. A tank contains 90 kilograms of salt and 2,000 liters of water. Pure water enters a tank at a rate of 8 liters per minute. The solution is mixed and drains from the tank at a rate of 4 liters per minute. The first question is what is the amount of salt in the tank initially? Well the first sentence tells us we're starting with 90 kilograms of salt. So part A is 90 kilograms. This also gives us what's called the initial condition, where if the function y of t tells us how much salt is in the tank at any time t, we now know that y of zero must equal 90. We'll need this information again later. Part b, we're asked to find the amount of salt in the tank after 1.5 hours, and then c, we want to find the concentration of salt in the solution in the tank as time approaches infinity. We can model the situation using the differential equation dy dt equals r sub one minus r sub two, where dy dt is a rate of change of the amount of salt at any time t, r sub one is a rate of change of the amount of salt entering the tank, and r sub two is a rate of change of the amount of salt exiting or leaving the tank. So we'll begin by finding r sub one and r sub two. For these rates, we'll find the product of the concentration of the solution and the flow rate. So again, R sub one is the rate of change of the salt entering the tank. So we'll have the concentration of the salt in the solution entering the tank times the flow rate. We'll notice how we're told pure water enters a tank at a rate of eight liters per minute. So the concentration of salt in the solution entering the tank is actually zero kilograms of salt per liter because it's pure water times a flow rate of eight liters per minute. So notice how the units of liters does simplify out, but either way the product is zero, it would be zero kilograms of solar entering the tank per minute. And now for R sub two we want to find the rate at which salt is entering the tank. So again we'll have a concentration of salt times a flow rate, and we're told the flow rate exiting the tank or leaving the tank is four liters per minute. And now the concentration of salt in the tank at any time t is actually changing. It's based upon the amount of salt in the tank at any time t and the amount of water in the tank at any time t. Well we know the amount of salt in the tank at any time t is equal to y or y of t, so we'd have y divided by, now the total amount of water in the tank at any time t is going to be 2,000, the starting amount, Plus, notice how the flow rate entering the tank is eight liters per minute, and the flow rate exiting the tank is only four liters per minute. Which means the amount of water in the tank is increasing by four liters per minute, because the flow rate entering is four liters more than the flow rate exiting. So we'd have 2,000 plus four T for the total amount of water in the tank at any time T. And the units here are kilograms per liter liters simplifies out, and this gives us our sub two equals four y divided by the quantity 2,000 plus four t, and the units are kilograms per minute. But notice how this does simplify. All the terms contain a factor of four. This simplifies to y divided by the quantity 500 plus t kilograms per minute which means our differential equation is going to be dy dt equals r sub one which is zero minus r sub two, which again is y divided by the quantity 500 plus t. Let's go ahead and solve this on the next slide. So we'd have dy dt equals, we can drop the zero and just write negative y all over the quantity 500 plus t Again, this is a separable differential equation. If we multiply both sides by dt, we'd have differential y equals negative y divided by the quantity 500 plus t dt. We want the y term to be on the right side. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by one over y. So we'd have one over y dy equals negative one over the quantity 500 plus t dt. So now that we have a function of y times dy equals a function of t times dt, we'll integrate both sides of the equation, integrate, and then solve for y. 
So we'd have the integral of one over y dy equals the integral of negative one over 500 plus t dt. So on the left side we have natural log absolute value of y. We would have a constant of integration, but we'd also have a constant on the right, so let's only put the constant on the right. So we'd have equals. Now we might be thinking we have to perform u substitution here, but notice how if we let u be equal to 500 plus t, differential u is equal to one dt or just dt, so no u substitution is required. On the right side we'll just have negative natural log absolute value of the quantity 500 plus t. And for the constant of integration, let's write plus c sub one. Now we need to solve this for y. To do this though, let's get the natural logs on the same side. Let's add natural log of the quantity 500 plus t to both sides, which would give us natural log absolute value of y plus natural log absolute value of the quantity 500 plus t equals c sub one. Now here, because we're adding two logs with the same base, we can combine them by multiplying y and 500 plus t. So we can say natural log absolute value of y times the quantity 500 plus t equals c sub one. And now let's write the log equation as an exponential equation where we know that natural log is log base e. So as an exponential equation we would have e raised to the power of c sub one equals y times the quantity 500 plus t. So let's write that as y times the quantity 500 plus t equals e raised to the power of c sub one. But e raised to the power of c sub one is just some constant. Let's let e raised to the power of c sub one be equal to c. So we'd have y times the quantity 500 plus t equals c. Solving for y, we would divide both sides by 500 plus t. So now we know that y or y of t equals the constant c divided by the quantity 500 plus t. Now to find the value of c, we'll use the initial condition that we found on part a, that y of zero equals 90. So if y of zero equals 90, we can substitute 90 for y of t and zero for t and solve for c. That would give us the equation 90 equals c divided by the quantity 500 plus zero, which is 500. So multiplying both sides by 500, we'd have c equals 45,000. So by substituting 45,000 for c, we now have the particular solution or the function y of t that will tell us how much salt is in the tank at any time t. We would have y of t equals 45,000 divided by the quantity 500 plus t. So now going back to our question, part b asks us to find the amount of salt in the tank after 1.5 hours. We need to be careful here because the time in our problem is in minutes, not hours. So to answer this question, because 1.5 hours is equal to 90 minutes, we want to find y of 90. So again, using our function y of t, we want to determine the value of y of 90. So we have 45,000 divided by the quantity 500 plus 90, which is 45,000 divided by 590. which would be approximately 76.2712. And the units here would be kilograms of salt. So going back to our first slide, we now know part B is 76.2712 kilograms of salt. And now for part C, we're asked to find the concentration of salt in the solution in the tank as the time approaches infinity. Well, if we find the limit as t approaches infinity of y of t, that would tell us the amount of salt. Once we find the amount, we can find the concentration. So notice how the limit as t approaches infinity of y of t
would actually be equal to zero because notice how the denominator increases without bound because t approaches infinity and the numerator is a constant, which means as time increases without bound, the amount of salt in the tank approaches zero and therefore the concentration would also approach zero. So part C, the concentration approaches zero kilograms of salt per liter. I hope you found this helpful.